Louisiana vs. All Yard, Jarrett Rose are here with Elijah Hamilton, standout from Hanville, who uh, just in the last couple hours made the commitment announcement to McNeese State, uh, getting ready for your senior year, and then planning to go head out to Lake Charles now for college. Uh, Elijah, man, good to see you. Congratulations on the news. How, how's everything been going? I uh, appreciate it. I appreciate it, Oliver. Um, it's it been going good. You know, the relationship we built, I've built with Coach Frank. And the whole, just the whole staff, I mean, they show a lot of love and they make me feel like that that's the perfect spot for me. You know what I'm saying? They make me feel comfortable. Yeah, so let, I mean, let we can jump right into to that college stuff. You you choose McNeese State over offers that you had from Lamar, South Alabama, and Grambling State. Uh, you had some other schools that had, had shown interest, but I know it, the the expectations for what your recruiting process was going to look like this spring and summer – got really crazy with the way COVID shut everything down. And so it kind of – it threw a curveball. So what what did this spring turn out for you in terms of what communication you were able to have and what some of those conversations looked like with Coach Frank as well as some of the other coaches from other schools? Well, I just had to stay home and just wait my time, you know what I'm saying? Because COVID and spring, not being able to do spring, it kind of hit me. Like, I'm, I'm like, I ain't going to be able to play spring, be able to – show my to know to everybody so everybody can know do know how to play you know what I'm saying so but once COVID hit it was kind of a blessing at the same time because it hit like a lot of coaches started hitting me up and then when when coach Frank had hit me up I was like man it's amazing because I, I I just remember coach Frank being at LSU so when I heard his name I was like yeah this this real business we talking you know what I'm saying so I built a relationship with him from all coaches, like from all the coaches that, including the trainers, just everybody. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you more about how how nerve wracking was it for a stretch when when COVID hit and you didn't know what the what was going to hold, and then you you mentioned it how much of a relief it ended up being and how exciting it was to have have coaches from schools start reaching out, have a guy like Frank Wilson that is so well known um, around certainly the New Orleans, greater New Orleans area, and then really the state as a whole. What was kind of that emotional roller coaster like for you from March through where we are now, where you get a chance to make an exciting commitment? Uh, it was exciting. It was real exciting. I'm not going to lie. It was real exciting. Like, I mean, I couldn't believe in myself. I couldn't believe in myself. Like, it, it all started once one rolled in, once, once one off of me. And they all started rolling in. Everybody just started, like, texting my phone. It was exciting. It was exciting. But I had to, like, keep on working because I didn't want to let that, like, distract me, get that to my head. So I, I just kept working. So I, so better <clears throat> better things could come. You know what I'm saying? But it was it was exciting to know that – it was exciting to know that they have coaches out here that's inter interested in me. Yeah, and you, you had mentioned, and we talked a little bit about just – the the track record that Frank Wilson has um, at at multiple levels here in Louisiana, and then obviously his years out in San Antonio as uh, as the head coach at UTSA. Tell me a little bit more about kind of your familiarity with with Frank the Frank Wilson from a name standpoint, as well as him being around around football, and, and you getting a chance to know him more more and more, uh, particularly during this recruiting process, and, and just what what that relationship has meant, what type of guy he's been, what some of the conversations have looked like. Well, the count the first the first night we got on the phone, the night he offered me, he was like, Elijah, I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to reach out to you all day. And now I'm able to get on the phone with you. And it's like it was amazing when he said this Frank Wilson. Like when he said Frank Wilson, it was like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it kinda it was exciting. Like Frank talking to Frank talking to Coach Frank was like a dream come true because his back just just based off his background from him being at LSU and being at UTSA and now he at McNeese so it, it was just like it was really exciting talking to him over the phone the conversation we had was like him bringing me in bringing me in and being able to like produce for the team so he he's looking he's looking real highly on me like you know what I'm saying yeah what did uh what did Frank and, and any other coaches that you had a chance to talk to with McNeese uh, share with you about kind of their vision for the program as well as their vision for you fitting into it at, and making an impact there? What's kind of the, the outlook for, for the program as a whole and, and the outlook for you as your role within it? 
Well, they, they basically was telling me, like, they just want to build something great. They want to build something great and real and as fast as they can. So, like, when they pulled me in, when they called me and they pulled me in, I was like, I'm ready for I'm ready for all of it. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, it humbled me, but I was ready. I'm, I feel like I'm ready, for, I'm ready for it. And the way they was, the way they was, just the stuff that they were telling me about me playing, being able to play, and all the opportunities that they was going to give me to come in and start as a true freshman was like, so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I just got to put in the work for it. And I, you know, just to come in and build the program, just – like he told, he told me. They told me once I commit, everybody should. You know what I'm saying? They're, so they're looking at you as having that type of an impact. Uh, they they know kind of your your connections and relationships with with guys around certainly around New Orleans area and and River Parishes and everything. They they look at you as a guy that can can be sort of a, a leader of of the class and and get some more guys on board. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's exactly. It. From the the football standpoint. Uh, let's talk a little bit about kind of where you are and what some of the things that that you have been most pleased with to this point that you feel like folks uh, out in Lake Charles who are, are eager to hear about the impact that you can make out there. What are some of those strong suits that you feel really good about? And what have been some of the things that this offseason and heading into senior year, you're still kind of working on perfecting and building upon? Well, you know, I'm working every day, um, perfecting, perfecting my craft every day. So, like, I'm preparing myself not only for the season, but I'm preparing myself for the next level too. So the senior year coming up, a lot of people depending on me and the team, like the team depending on me, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's just a lot of pressure, but I'm taking it one day at a time and I'm being patient with it. So I'm working on my craft every day, not only for high school, but the next level, like I said, because like, that's why I feel like, that's why I feel like it's going to be my time to shine for real. That's, that's where I've been preparing for all my life. What has what has your off season looked like thus far in terms of what kind of your routine has been and what you've been able to to get in and, and focus on under the the kind of weird limitations that we've had these past couple months? So I some I do two days Monday through Friday Monday through Friday I run I get up in the morning wake up about six thirty and then I get up at six thirty and then I go train do speed training with Skylar Green uh, if you're familiar with who that is Skylar Green I go train I go train a speed training with him on the levee or we go to a park and we do speed drills. And then later on, probably later on that day, I lift some, I go to the gym or I lift, but it been work all, it been work since COVID started and it's going to keep on going until it's my time to stop. Skylar's a pretty good person to do speed training with, I would say. Oh yeah. He, <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord. You, you have. Yeah, that, you, you the truth. What? You the truth. He the truth. When we were getting into this spring, we talked a lot about there were some schools that were waiting to see what your 40 time was going to look like as you got to camps. And that was an aspect that you were working on of trying to make the 40 time reflect the speed that you showed actually out there on Friday nights or at camps or eventually Saturdays and stuff like that. How has that stuff been going? What, I mean, do you have a, an updated 40 time of, of what you've been able to run since you started to make that a focus? What's, what has some? What have some of the results looked like of the opportunities to work with Skylar recently? Well, after testing, it's been like like a kind of four five one ish. So that's uh, that's that's progress. It, it's been, I've been I've been doing I've been going speed training with him for like two months, and that, and that's progress. It, it's been progress. It's been progressing, but it's just keep on going. I'm satisfied with one time. I just want to get to the fastest time I can run. Yes, sir. And in terms of some of the, the other goals that you look at for, for this upcoming season, you talk about getting into two-a-days and, and you guys getting a chance as, as a Hanville team to start getting back together and start looking at what the hopefully fall holds, if we can get back to some normalcy. Um, you guys have a coaching change with Coach Salt leaving. Coach Luquette takes over a guy that, that was there this past year, and, and so you all have some familiarity with. What is that – transition looked like for you guys what are some of the the early goal setting and mindset type conversations for the team uh it's like i mean we talk about it all the time in the group chat and i, and I heard a group chat that we got to take it one day at a time you know what i'm saying with the transition so we taking it one day at a time we just, we really need on the team for all the scenes not one or two but we need all the scenes to step up because we gotta we should look up to us and once they once they see us they know how to handle that 
See what I'm saying? So we got to set a, a, a good example for them. And that's, How- that's what... That's what all. That's what we all talk about. Setting a good example for the underclassmen. Yeah. How as a senior class right now, with how how strange and unique of of circumstances we're dealing with as we approach a season. How much do you guys try to to talk to the younger guys about just a level of focus or flexibility or or how to try and stay on point as as we deal with everything that we're dealing with oh we talk all the time about it we talk all the time about it what we preach is what we preach is stand patient and stay humble because your time gonna come you just got to be patient with it like it's it's it's, it's, it's in god's hands you know what i'm saying so it, it's not you don't get full control over everything but it, it's all about patience and humbleness and that's what we preach to the young underclassmen and we just try to get them to roll keep just roll keep that same mindset rolling as far as we mentioned about the aspect of you being a leader amongst the McNeese recruiting class, do you have other guys already in mind that you think would be really great additions to the group, guys that you're already kind of chirping in their ear that they need to come join you? Who are, who are some of the guys on, on your yeah. wish list that you would love to see end up in Lake Charles? Tyler Morton, Jalen Johnson, we need you. We need to make that move ASAP. ASAP. Jalen Johnson, Tyler Morton. Remember the two names. Say say a little bit more about them because they're got they're other guys that don't get as much attention recruiting wise as as you would potentially expect them to garner considering the things that they have been able to do on Friday nights. I, I mean, obviously we've been close with with Jalen through these last couple of years and seen some of the things he's been able to do and and still stay under the radar despite the fact that he's a He's a real problem for opposing defenses. Just kind of yeah, say a little, yeah, yeah. Say, say a little bit about those two guys and what stands out about them that you would want them to come join. Jalen, Jalen is like real versatile. You could put him in the backfield and have him run routes out the out the backfield. You could put him in a slot. Underrated player in the state. Tyler, he he just a ball hog. He a ball hog. He could come down. He could play corner. He could play slot corner. He could play outside. He could play free safety, strong. He could play all over the. He could play all over the field. And he like, he he legit. He legit. Them two. Them two. Um, legit. And we talk every day about just being, just being patient. Like time coming. Remember, it was just times when we used to just talk and be like, it "Ain't coming, I'm coming." But we just had to lift each other up and just be like, hey, "It's coming." We just gotta stay patient. Just keep on praying, keep on grinding, and it's gonna come. Don't rush it, cause the more you rush it, like it ain't gonna come. Any last messages to, to any McNeese State fans that, that end up watching this and are, are just looking for, for a la, like a kind of last, last message, anything you want to add to them uh, as, as the latest commitment to this class? Uh, it's a good spot. It's a good spot. It's a good spot. That's all I can say. It's a good spot. Led by good people, great people. Like I said, Frank Wilson, that's, that's, he a great man. He, he a good man. He good people. And that's just a, that's just a good spot to build something that people wouldn't, wouldn't even expect. Like, it could happen so fast. So, y'all look into it, for real. No doubt. Another good young football player going to join those good people and, and good place to be out in Lake Charles, Elijah Hamilton, the, the Hanville standout, uh, who just, just committed this afternoon. Elijah, Elijah. man, thank, thanks again for taking a couple minutes. Congrats again. Send the love to, to Pops and everybody over there. Appreciate you. All right, cool. I mean, all right, Joe. <laughs> Appreciate it. I got you. Thanks, man. Again, he's Elijah Hamilton, uh, Hanville, and and then to McNeese State after that with the, the commitment announcement right. today. The Louisiana Versailles, y'all. Jared Roser.